Good morning and welcome to this, our online service at Cornerstone on Sunday the 21st of February. As I was setting up this morning, I noticed, and I must have seen this hundreds of times, the sign behind me for Assemblies of God that says we are stronger together. And of course, as individuals, as brothers and sisters, we are stronger when we meet together, when we work together, when we cooperate. There's a scripture that says that a threefold cord is not easily broken. And that means that those who have faith, when they join together in worship, when they join together in endeavours for the Lord, will have much greater strength than we ever could individually. But of course, the source of our strength is not simply by being one with another. But the source of our strength is relying on the Lord our God. Let me read a few words from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. And I'm reading from the voice version of the Bible, so it may sound slightly different this morning. Brothers and sisters, in light of all I have shared with you about God's mercies, I urge you to offer your bodies as a living and a holy sacrifice to God. A sacred offering that brings him pleasure. This is your reasonable, essential worship. Do not allow this world to mould you in its own image. Instead, be transformed from the inside out by renewing your mind. As a result, you will be able to discern what God wills and whatever God finds good pleasing and complete. Our prayer is this morning that as we sing our songs, that as we offer our prayers, that as we hear the word and we share in the breaking bread, that the things that we bring will indeed be pleasing to the Lord our God. Let's pray. Father God, you alone are worthy of glory and of honour and of all praise. So we come this morning acknowledging that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, that there is no other like you. We pray for this, our nation, and for this world still in the midst of this pandemic, that healing and wholeness, that relief of suffering, that freedom from pain might be made known across this world, that you would move by your spirit, bringing freedom and hope. We pray for ourselves as we gather each in our own homes this morning, that as we share, that as we sing, that as we hear your word, we would know your presence moving in us in through us. Come Holy Spirit, come Lord Jesus, speak to us clearly and have your way. Amen. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. Like 
We come now to the time in our service where we break bread together. And I want to start this portion by reading a few words of scripture. Just before Jesus was taken and crucified, he prayed for himself. He prayed for those that were closest to him, the apostles. And he prayed for all believers. I'm going to read a few verses from John Chapter 27, that prayer for all believers. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they may also be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one, just as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me, and I have loved them, as you have loved me. It's an incredible thing to realize that Jesus the Son loves us with the same love that God the Father so loved him with. You are loved this morning and as we come to share in this breaking of bread may you know, may you realize just how important you are to God that in and through Jesus he should pay that price for you, for me, and for all people. Let's pray. As we draw near to break bread and share the cup together, 
We thank you, Lord, that you considered us worthy. We know that we've not done anything in our own right or in our own nature to merit your great love. Yet, on that cross, you went and you poured out your blood and your love so that we might so that we might come into the presence of the one true and living God. Let us pray together the prayer that when the disciples asked how they ought to pray, Jesus said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Turning now to the words of institution from 1 Corinthians. The words that Jesus spoke to Paul, similar words to those recorded in the Gospels. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And as we take this bread, those words strike home to us once again on the same night in which he was betrayed, reminding us of the very sinful nature of mankind across the generations, that you were willing to go to that cross, Lord Jesus, even for the one who betrayed you. Help us, Lord, as we fall short, as we fail to live up to our own standards far less yours, to know that your body broken on the cross has paid the price for all our sin. And so I declare this morning the body of Christ broken once for all, In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We thank you, Lord, for your blood that was shed. The blood that flowed so freely, that cleanses so deeply and so completely above and beyond anything that had been offered before or anything that might be offered since, for only you were the perfect sacrifice. The blood of Christ shed once for all. And the scripture concludes... For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. We thank you, Lord, that death could not hold you, that on that third day you were raised up, and that even now you are seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us, praying for us. Who are we? that we should be worthy of such an honour, except that you have made us worthy. In Jesus' name. Amen.
everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of the Savior, the hope of nations. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to say, He is mighty to say. Forever, author of salvation, heroes and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. So take me as you find me, all my fears and failures. Fill my life again. Give my life to Father. Everything. Good morning and it's it's great to share with you what God has for us today and uh, this word this morning comes from something very simple and it was last week Amanda and I were out for a walk with our two dogs and anyone that knows our dogs and has heard them uh, will know the they're quite loud they're quite vocal and as we we're walking through the village we met a couple of friends who were walking their dog as well and we were going to have a chat well of course our dogs like i said don't like other dogs and particularly our small one our small dog she was very very loud and barks and barks and barks and doesn't shut up so it was trying to have a conversation was now an impossible it was it was like a, a conversation that didn't really happen and then our son jonathan he sort of walked away with with lucy and, and she sort of did quieten down a bit, but it was so distracting, to say the least. It, it was difficult to have a conversation, even for a few moments. And as we went on our walk, uh, these, these thoughts, these distraction thoughts began racing around my mind. And I, as we got back home, I believe that God has spoken to us. God spoke to me through this situation, given us this message for today and it was all about being distracted all about being distracted and today and these days that we're living in being distracted is really common it's a it's a thing that you know there's so many things going on in the world that we can be distracted by television stations we've got that many to choose from nowadays i remember the days of there was only three channels and then channel four came along some of you will remember even further back than that but we have literally hundreds of channels to choose from 
alongside Netflix and other TV things that you can just stream whenever you want. There's a, ple a plethora of social media platforms to go on, Facebook, oh, Twitter, Instagram, and it goes on and on and on. We can be distracted by the amount of shops that there are. And years ago, I would have said the shops that we have to go into physically, but nowadays I can sit at home and I can order anything from my phone to be delivered maybe the next day. You can be distracted by even by surfing the net. And we can be distracted by all the jobs we have to do. Now, in themselves, there's nothing particularly wrong with any of these, but it's when they start to take over. And that's where God spoke today. When things begin to take over our lives and we lose our, our focus of God, then that's maybe when we need to rethink things. When we need to maybe have a have a think of our own about our own lives and how things are, what's distracting us, and and or just as I'm thinking about this, uh, the children at school when I'm teaching, the they will be listening or they'll appear to listen, and then all of a sudden they'll switch off, and I can see that glazed look come across their faces. And it could be the slightest thing, it could be a fly on the wall and they're sort of looking around. It could be somebody does something off the other side of the classroom. It could be an exciting squirrel outside running around climbing a tree, which is far more exciting than English or maths that we do in school. Um, and the slightest little thing can sometimes distract children. A preacher once said and once described distractions as the purpose killer. The purpose killer and, and I, I really thought about this little phrase how can distractions be the purpose killer it says well i've written down here our ability to overcome distraction will be the number one determiner of how successful we are on our path to fulfilling god's promises in our lives so in other words god's promised god's purposed us for a reason for something specific but yet distractions come along and take us away from that purpose and that plan and that path that God has for us. And just for even a few seconds, we think of, of Bible heroes that we sometimes think are wonderful and, and are almost perfect. But they experience distractions of all sorts of different types. David was distracted by pleasure. Abraham by fear. Paul was, well, by pain or the, the thing that was, was getting to him. You know, we might give our distractions all sorts of names, all sorts of things. But at the end of the day, distraction is something that pulls us away from the attention of God. And it can come in many forms. And I'm sure you'd agree with me that our pace of life nowadays seems faster in all respects. Sort of everything's just speeded up every single day. It doesn't matter what we do, where we go. Everything seems to be fast, fast, fast. Distractions might have changed over the years, but they're not a new thing. People have been distracted by things for years and years and years. <clears throat> We're going to have a look at a couple of examples of Bible characters where they have been, maybe they've maybe lost their focus or something in their lives has taken them away from Jesus, has, has moved their eyes off God. And what is God saying to us? through these couple of examples that we're going to look at today. And one key distraction from following God's purpose and plans is being scared. Fear. You know, fear is only a tiny little word, four letter word, and whatever form it might take, but it's a massive distraction. It, it can even paralyze people from doing things, from going places, from, from speaking to people. I, I can suppose to say I was like that years ago, maybe when I was younger. I was frightened almost of speaking to people. I had a fear. In Matthew 14, 22 to 32, we read the story of Peter walking towards Jesus on the water. I'm just going to read that now. So it's Matthew 14, 22 to 32. The story we know really well. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowd. After he dismissed them, 
he went to the mountain side by himself to pray. Later that night, he was alone there, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly after dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of his boat, out of the boat, walked on the water and came towards Jesus. This is the bit. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink, crying out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught hold of him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the son of God. And, and I think this is one of the most clear but heartbreaking examples of distraction in the Bible. It's one of my favourite stories of all time. Peter was, uh, yeah, you could, you could say he was impetuous. You could say he was hot-headed. He jumped into situations without fully thinking things through. But on that day, Peter challenged his own faith by asking Jesus to call him into the water. He stepped out of the boat. And I love that. He stepped out of the boat. But a few steps in, he began to sink. And of course, we read that Jesus reached out and reached out his hand and, and caught him. But in simple terms, yeah, Peter stretched his faith that day by stepping out of the boat. Peter started, though, to pay attention to the how of his calling rather than the who. So he looked at the how rather than looking at the who. To start with, Peter was confident, got out of the boat, yay, I'm going towards Jesus, I'm going to walk towards him. But only a few seconds later, he found himself sinking because he looked at his circumstances. Peter looked at the water, the storm, the waves coming up and down, the task that he had to do, instead of the one who was calling him to it. This was written, I've written it in bold as well, really important. When we take our eyes off the one who calls us, we let fear sink our progress. I'll say that again. When we take our eyes off the one who calls us, that's God, and Peter took his eyes off Jesus that day, we let fear sink our progress. I pray at all times, that, and it might not always be easy, but we, myself included, must keep our eyes on Jesus, not what's going on around us, but Unto the one who sustains us. He sustains us. He's the one who keeps us going. And yes, we do need to be aware of, our, of what's going on. I don't mean not to look at all. But you know what I'm saying. That we focus on him rather than our circumstances. And Isaiah writes in Isaiah 41, 13. For I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear. I will help you. What a comfort that verse is. Just as Jesus reached down and took hold of Peter's hand, God is reaching down and taking hold of your hand and saying, don't fear, I will help you. I am with you. Don't worry about it. Look to me and I'll help. Another important distraction can sometimes be our service to God. The things we do when we're serving God. Yes, I, I did say that, and I am not losing my mind, don't worry. But as Christians, we need to consider this carefully. I wrote this down and I thought, yeah, you know, there were times before the pandemic, before the lockdowns that we've had, when we've been so busy sometimes doing things for God, even, that we haven't had time to actually spend time with God. And I hope this is coming across in the right way. I'm speaking to me more than anyone else. I think this time that we've been through, this past year or so, it's maybe made us reevaluate and rethink things and speaking to different people, I know that is the case. 
we've been so busy and distracted by doing things, busy for God perhaps, that we've neglected spending time with God. Of course each one of us has been called to serve others, I, I, I'm not saying of course, but we must learn to balance that service with our own walk with him. In Luke chapter 10 we see two sisters, Mary and Martha. Martha was doing a good thing, you might remember the story, I'm just going to read it quickly. Luke 10, 38 to 41. It says, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you were worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Now again, we've heard this story countless times, and it's a, a lovely story. Martha is, is, is doing what probably we would be doing ourselves. Martha's doing preparing food or whatever she was doing, preparing something to drink, preparing a meal for them. She's in the middle of serving, of doing what you would have thought would have been asked to, of her to do. But she was fulfilling a duty. But she was the one that Jesus corrected. She was the one that Jesus said, no, you're distracted by all of this stuff. And you know what, really? All of this stuff, Martha, it's not important. All of this stuff that you're doing, yes, we need to eat, we need to drink. But you know, there's something better. There's something more important. And Mary, your sister, has chosen the better part. Has chosen to listen to my words. Don't be distracted by all of those things that might be going on. Don't be distracted by the preparations for this, that and the other. But focus on Jesus. When we confine ourselves to just doing good things for God, although they're completely right and absolutely necessary, we must be careful not to cut ourselves off from the great things God has for us and, of course, not neglecting to spend time with God himself. Martha was unwise that day. She chose the distractions and she thought she was doing the right thing. But I pray that each one of us would choose that better part, that part that is better when Mary sat at the feet of Jesus and listened and just soaked in what he was saying. I want to do that. Now, obviously, I'm busy. I'm doing loads of things at the moment. Even with school, we're doing teaching in school and we home learning. So we're doing remote learning online as well. And obviously working in church. And all of these things, I do have to balance. I have to be like a, a juggler, balancing them correctly. But I can't neglect spending time with God, otherwise I've got nothing to give. Because spending time with God is that re-energising moment. Is that moment when he fills you, when he renews you, when he speaks to you, when he pours in of his spirit. And I, I can't neglect that, and neither can anyone. So let's not cut ourselves off from what great things God has done and what God wants to say in our lives. And now we could go on all morning and, and cover every distraction possibly iman imaginable in the Bible and have a, a situation to go with it. But I'm just going to speak about one more distraction. Our past. Your past. My past. A past that might affect many believers, many Christians might concentrate on their past and I just thought about the character of Joseph in the Old Testament in the book of Genesis now if you do want to read up about him in uh, chapters 37 to 50 that is the whole story of Joseph of course this morning that's far too long to read all of those chapters but if you do want to spend the time in, in studying Joseph he's well worth it but Joseph in the book of Genesis he had a past. 
I think we can probably say he had a past. He made some mistakes early on. He, he at the start he was big headed. He was he was thought he was better than his brothers. He said, "Oh, everybody will bow down to me." That that maybe he wasn't as wise as he maybe should have been. But his past had no bearing on what God had for him for the future. And our past, your past, has no bearing on how far we can go with God. So many people might be tied to their mistakes. It might be, it might be almost like a, a, a shackle tying them down, like chains holding them so that they can't move forward. They, they're desperate to move forward into what God has, but, oh, I did that in the past. Oh, God won't for, forgive me. Oh, I've messed up that part of my life. God isn't bothered about your past. God isn't interested in what's gone before. Because God wants your attention right now, in the here and now, in the present, so that he can set you free from those things that might have been holding you down. So that he wants you to look straight ahead. Because what he has for you isn't behind you, but it is in front. Paul writes in Philippians 3 verse 13, I focus on this one thing, and he says this, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. Forgetting the past, looking forward to what lies ahead. And our history, especially personal history, it has its role to play in our lives. We can learn from the past, but then let's not keep turning to look to the past, but then Let's keep pressing forward. Like Paul says, let's look forward to what lies ahead. And God says to us, let's leave the past behind. Let's leave that distraction that might be holding you back. Turn around, leave it with God and look forward to what God has planned for you. Because he's got something great, something amazing, something wonderful for your life and for my life. So let's sum up what I've said today. Just a few things that we can maybe think about or, or that might help us to not be distracted and help us to focus on Jesus. Firstly, to make a definite decision to seek God. Let's pray and listen to what he's saying to you. Let's secondly, let's be focused and read your Bible every day. And, and the thing is, it's even easier to read the word of God now because it's on our phones, it's on our tablets. So we can actually read in the car. Well, not when you're driving. Please don't, please don't drive and look at your phone. That's, you're not allowed to do that. And it's dangerous. But I'm saying you can look at the Bible anywhere you go to because it's on your phone. Let's read and believe what God says. Let those truths sink into our hearts and thirdly let's spend time with God let's make time to spend time with God let's find a quiet place let's go for a walk with the dogs up on the hills let's let's talk to God let's listen to worship music let's spend time in his presence and you know what God will bless you beyond your wildest imagination so let's avoid the distractions of our lives and they may come in many different forms but let's focus on Jesus because he's the author and finisher of our faith. I pray that God would bless you this morning. Amen. This is a, a worship song that God gave me 2019 and it's called Come Fill Our Hearts. Come fill our hearts. We're hungry, Lord. We need your spirit to move in this place. We need your spirit to move in our hearts. We need your spirit to move, Lord, in, in Evenwood and the surrounding villages. And Lord, we are open. We are open to, to you.
shared with us this morning about, um, about being distracted. Where did I put my glasses? Oh, sorry. Ah, there you are. When Andrew was speaking about being distracted, it brought to mind how sometimes we allow ourselves to be distracted and how that can be dangerous, how sometimes we even invite distraction. I remember one day uh, driving up A1, I think it was, uh, and I was, uh, Brenda and I were in the car together and I was a bit distracted by something. Uh, and Brenda simply called out Sandy in a loud voice and I looked up and had she not done so, we'd have been into the back of a truck. I don't even remember why I was distracted, but I do remember that moment. I shouldn't have taken my eyes off the road. And in life, we shouldn't take our eyes off Jesus. If we take our eyes off him, we too might wander off in a dangerous direction. If we take our eyes off him for too long, we might not be able to find him again. Fix your gaze upon Jesus. Keep him in focus. Keep all that is good and true and positive in your sight and know that when we trust him and when we look up to him, he will never let us go. And so, although we may seem to lose our way, yet the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords holds us safe in his hands. Let's pray. Lord God, as we go about our business this week, help us not to be distracted, but to keep our eyes firmly fixed on you. Help us as we go about our business to help others so that they might see and know and hear and understand that the Lord of all lords, that the God who is above all gods, loves each and every individual. Help us to be a blessing to those whom we meet. In Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you until we meet again.